So today I just wanted to give a quick introduction on how to get started with Amazon Managed Blockchain. So I'm in the console and you can see that I have chosen the Ethereum mainnet network um, and I've created a node in this network and it's of type bc.t3.large which is I believe the smallest blockchain instance type you can have. And it gave me the key pieces of information here are the HTTP endpoint and the WebSocket endpoint. I'm going to be using the HTTP endpoint and I'm going to be using the API to make calls to this instance. So it took about 15 minutes or so for this um, node to stand up and be ready to accept API calls. And you can see if I zoom out maybe the past six hours or so, it was, it was started on uh, April 23rd at 8.45 a.m. Central, and I believe it was about 9.30, so closer to an hour when it was finally ready. Um, so memory utilization was quite low up until about 9.40 when it was finally ready for me. So um, once it was up, I decided to just try to run some basic commands against it. And I basically followed the, uh, to the Amazon tutorial for this. Uh, but before we go to that, just a couple of key concepts about this. This is basically a way to let Amazon provision an Ethereum node for you rather than you doing it yourself. And it joins to either mainnet or the public test nets. And a node just basically stores the state of Ethereum blockchain. And it verifies transactions and it participates in consensus. Um, and consensus is a way to just change the state of the blockchain. Everyone agrees, that's what consensus, consensus is, that everyone agrees that the blockchain should be as such. So you could just set up one of these nodes to develop against and set up uh, apps to work with it. And you've probably heard of, if you, if you know anything about Ethereum and smart contracts, that's basically, Ethereum is basically where the term smart contract came from, uh, the de decentralized notion of a smart contract. So I won't go to any more, really too much more detail about this, but um, they talk about the same, the three uh, supported networks. I'm currently connected to mainnet, but I could connect to Rinkaby or Robston. Uh, you can't mine on these nodes, and you can use WebSockets and HTTP. There's uh, API call payload limits, you need to sign your API calls, and only raw transactions are supported. Um, and you could have 50 of these nodes in the account. So um, if you go to setting up, it tells you how to create the IAM user. I actually already had an IAM user um, with the appropriate permissions to use with this. And then once you create the node, you can view the node details. That's what we were looking at before. And the endpoints, those are the key pieces as well. Um, and then make sure you're when you're done with this that you delete the node, otherwise you pay for it, running at all times. And the key piece here that I want to focus on is, is JSON RPC API. So again, I'm using um, not WebSockets, but HTTP. And these are the methods that are supported. And I'm just going to do like ETH block number, ETH estimate gas, um, and maybe just a basic connection. So um, these aren't all the Web3 ETH um, methods that you can use. You know, there's many more if you go to, to Web3.js because we're using JS. Um, we can see a bunch of others. For example, is mining is not supported by AWS. So as always, it's a restricted service. So if you need some of these calls that aren't available or these methods that aren't available in the Amazon managed blockchain, you should do your own, which is also easy to do. But if you want to be up and running quickly on one of the test networks or mainnet, uh, Amazon managed blockchain is a good choice. So these are the methods. And then if we go down a little further, you can see how we set up for using web3.js. You can also use other uh, protocols, but basically what you do here is install some NPM stuff, uh, set up your package.json um, with some XHR and Web3 information, then export your environment variables, and then create a JS file. 
and then create another JS file which is going to do the method call. So get node info is basically just going to tell us, is going to prove to us that we're connecting to the node. And then we'll run it with the node command. And in this particular example, get node info produces the version. It's go Linux AMD uh, 1.9.24 stable. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Visual Studio Code and see how I've got that set up. So I have these two files as recommended by AWS. And then I added a couple of additional uh, method calls in, in my .js file. Uh, we're just going to get the block number. So, and then I have an exports um, file where I did export all of my environment variables to the shell down here. So if we go ahead and run the command, which is node web3-example-httpjs, we get the version and the block number, the current block number. If we wait just a little bit, uh, the new block number should be something like 12,297,000, maybe 990 something. Okay, it just actually incremented by one in that time, but it did increment. So the blocks are increasing, so we're synced. And um, that's basically it. That's We have proven that we are connected via API to the managed blockchain node that we stood up in the Amazon account. So that's basically it for this first uh, introductory video about that. If you want to see something specific in Amazon managed blockchain, let me know and I'll see if I can do a video about it, um, especially for newcomers to either blockchain, cryptocurrency in general, or Ethereum. I'm not an Ethereum de developer by any means, so I may not be capable as far as doing some of the, the deeper dive stuff, but the beginner stuff I can definitely handle. So if you have something that you want to see, just leave a comment in this video and I'd be happy to see if I can set that up. And thanks for watching.